In this video, I will review and provide more details about my roof cargo box, electric fridge, and solar panel. How I use it, how they perform in my last six weeks cross country trip, and would I recommend it? The roof box I used in my camper was the Yakima Skybox 16 which I bought it from REI for $543 when it was on sale. Before I bought the roof box, my camper was always packed with stuff that made my small camper even smaller. I have to move things around in order to lie down or sleep. With the addition of the roof box, I can store items that I only use occasionally and free up more living space. Most minivan has roughly 140 to 150 cubic feet volume behind the first row seat. That's where you sit, cook, sleep, and store all your gears. By adding a cargo box to the roof, you are now having 166 cubic feet of space to use, which is 10% bigger than before. Let me show you what I keep in the box. Here I'll keep my 60 liter backpacking packs These are my DIY custom legs for my tables I always carry an extra umbrella and these are my extra hiking poles a pair of trail runner and these are my Solomon hiking boots I carry an extra 20 degree down sleeping bag. I keep most of my butane fuel canister here. This one is a bear canister I use for my backpacking. It is a Bear Walt BV450 bear canister. Inside I have a backpacking stove, lighter, titanium pot and fuel canister as well. I always carry a steel shovel. If I ever get stuck in mud or snow, this comes in handy. Here I have a small camp chair. Inside this bag, I have a pair of mittens and a super warm down pocket. I only need this when temperature drops below 20. Next is my DIY emergency toilet seat cover. Actually, I never use it. This is a blanket for my dog. And I always carry an extra fleece sleeping bag for my dog as well. Inside this bag is a 40 liter ultralight backpack from Gossamer Gear, which I use it for day height. This is a backpack for my dog. Here is a two-person tent for my backpacking. I also carry a portable pop-up pot, but I haven't used it once yet. Inside the dry bag is a pair of rain pants and a thermal rest sleeping pad, which I use for backpacking. These are the raised bed for my dog Rocky. Two extra paper towels. This is my 7x10 canopy with all the tie downs and anchor sticks. Now this is a 7 feet extension pole which I tie to the roof rail for canopy attachment. The canopy also requires two front poles. I also keep my two Cascade Mountain high back cam chairs in the roof box. This is the rain poncho and some more tent sticks. 
Last item is the solar panel, which I keep it at the bottom. It's just amazing how much stuff you can put into a cargo box. The roof box weighs 47 pounds. With all the stuff I loaded, it totaled to 116 pounds, which is within the low limits. I placed the roof box in the center of the roof to reduce impact on aerodynamic and handling of the car. Besides, it can be accessed on either side. During my 7,000 miles trip, I got an average of 22.8 miles per gallon, which is similar to my previous trips without the roof box. I did not notice any vibration or noise when driving at high speed, and there is no water leakage. Installing the roof box is fairly easy. No special tool is required. I think 16 cubic feet is the sweet spot for minivan due to the 150 pounds low limits. A bigger and heavier roof box actually reduces the load capacity. Do I regret getting the roof box? The answer is no, and I wish I had done it earlier. I used to bring two or even three coolers for long trip. Those coolers take up a lot of space and they never keep my stuff cold enough. It was inconvenient since I have to keep buying ice during the trip. My first cross-country trip convinced me that an electric fridge is the way to go. The fridge I put in my camper is a 12 volt compressor fridge. As far as I know, compressor fridge are more efficient and reliable. The walls of the fridge are 1.4 inches thick. It came with a protection jacket. The jacket doesn't have much insulation value and it's not practical to zip and unzip in order to open the fridge. I just don't like it. I also notice there's condensation between the jacket and the fridge. So I end up ditching the jacket. To improve efficiency of the fridge, I made a custom insulation pad using a pillowcase and raw wool insulation. I got this insulation free from shipping frozen product I ordered. The insulation is one and a half inch thick. At one end of the pillowcase, I use rigid insulation to prevent the pad being compressed by the countertop. To keep the pad in place, three Velcro straps were used. I have been using this fridge for two years and it is still running strong. The only issue I had is the temperature at the bottom is much colder than the top. I cut feed a plastic divider to keep all my vegetables on top and keep drinks and meat at the bottom. Depends on the temperature settings. I set the temperature above 34 degrees Fahrenheit and the fridge used about 2 to 3 watts at night. The compressor only turns on every now and then and I can hardly hear it during the day. I match this fridge with the Jackery 500 watt power generator. Without recharging the battery, it will only last two days and two nights. That's the reason why I consider upgrading my camper with a solar panel. Now let's talk about solar panel. The solar panel I use is a DIY portable rigid solar panel system. It cost me less than a hundred dollar. My design criteria are very simple. A solar charging system to keep my 12 volt fridge running continuously. Easy to build and put away when not in use. Adaptable. Can it be reused in future when built? Before I decided on which system to use, I did some research and here's what I found. Both systems has an advantage and disadvantage. 
The roof mount solar panel system will require roof space, more works, more cleaning, and may reduce gas mileage. The main advantages are full time charging and not required to set up at camp. Since I'm not a full time van life kind of travel, this system will not work for me. On the other hand, the portable version is much easier to build, less maintenance, and put away when I'm not traveling. There are many portable solar panels in the market, but they are not cheap. I picked the Renogy 100W Mono Crystalline Panel because it has a good ratings. If I ever change my setup, I can reuse it in the future projects. However, there was some quality issue with the unit I received. One of the corners was out of alignment. The panel does not come with kickstand or carrying handle, but this is an easy fix. I made a custom kickstand out of scrap wood. Then I tied the leg to the aluminum frame using a small hinge. The angle of the panel can be adjusted using plastic cord lock. To protect the frame from rough surface, I used double side tape to attach foam strip to elevate the panel at the bottom. For the handle, I used 1 inch nylon webbing. Metal handle gets very hot under the sun and not suitable for this application. To connect the panel to the Jackery 500, I purchased two additional cables. I used the 4 feet adapter cable for close hooked up. The 20 feet extension cable comes in handy when I have to place the panel away from the camper. To get the maximum solar input, the panel should be 90 degrees to the sun. I made a simple sun dial using finishing nail and a piece of scrap wood. When there is no shadow cast from the nail, your panel position is correct. When the battery is fully charged, the controller will stop receiving charge. Maximum input I recorded during my trip was 73 watts. There are a couple of days my battery was down to 10%. Since I always on the move, I was able to charge it up from driving. For my type of travel, a 500 watt generator seems adequate. So far I am happy how this setup turns out and I will continue to use it in my next trip. If you have any question, please leave comment below. Until then, happy camping. <laughs>